the foundation of uh, this discipleship is that uh, Jesus um, he called them first of all Jesus called them then Jesus named them isn't it okay then Jesus ordained them well, let's go back Jesus called them isn't it amen and Jesus named them and Jesus trained them isn't it he trained them hallelujah okay then Jesus ordained them isn't it then Jesus sent them hallelujah in, in this life you must be a disciple of someone you must be a disciple okay and one of the problem that we are producing very weak Christians is because Christians have refused to become what disciples okay so there is some principle called that Jesus called them to follow him okay so the first principle in the in a Christian journey is to learn to be a follower first isn't it okay he called them he named them hallelujah and then he ordained them and this ordination is what is very very important and it has got three things in it three things okay so what was the purpose of the ordination three things there where well, you have read okay the first one is what what was the eh? Eh? are you reading your bible can you read your bible again <laughs> when you read the bible read it again and again and again yeah every word of the bible is very key there are three things there he ordained them for three things that they be with him that's the first one the first the first purpose of ordination was not to preach the first purpose of the ordination was what is that they may be with him isn't it yeah now this is where many people miss it many people think the purpose of ordination is to preach but the preaching is secondary is the second thing that they may be with him isn't it hallelujah and that is what many christians today they miss it when any leader ordains you the purpose of that ordination is that you may be with that your leader you may be with your leader that is the first thing of ordination that you may be with him okay so the first reason for ordination is that you may be with your leader okay the people which president uru has put them in cabinet is not for the work but first they may be with him first isn't it they may be with him that they may the first purpose of ordination is to be in the presence of god that's the first thing and many people where they lose the call of god is they miss the first one so they go for the second one so they are so preoccupied with the preaching they miss the first one that they may be with him you see when you are with the lord or with your leader you continue to receive from your leader so the first thing about ordination is not to preach is to be with your leader and you have to know that that the reason why you have been made an evangelist is not to evangelize is to be with your leader first isn't it be there hallelujah learn from him stay in the feet isn't it the second one is what uh-huh. what is it written there that he what is it written he was that he must send them 
Is it he must? Is it is it written he must? What is it you are reading? Huh? He might. Huh? So might is it compulsory? Isn't it? But the first one is it compulsory? That they may be with him. That is compulsory. But the second one is what? Is that they may they may be available. They may be available. Should he want to send them? He can send them. Should he want them just to stay around him? They can stay. <laughs> Isn't it? So you see the, the, that they may be with him. They may be. He may send them. So the second reason for the calling is that you need to be available to your leader that he may send you. That you need to be available anytime that he may do what? He may send you to preach. Isn't it? Mnanielewa? Hallelujah. Though you may be ready at all times, you may be available at all time that he may do what? He may send you. So that is a, is a place of readiness. Availability. Hallelujah. And you need to be available for your leader. At any time he sends you, you need to be there to go. Hallelujah. You can never be busy for your leader. Okay, a disciple has three things. Number one, he is around the leader. He may be with him. When you find somebody who is not with the leader, then he is not a disciple. You need to be hanging around. Be there. Hallelujah. That is a disciple. The second one is available to be what? To be sent. To preach. So he's ready with the message. And the third one. What is the third? The third uh, reason for being ordained. Eh? Is number 15. Is it the first verse 15? That that he may give them what? Power. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, the other reason for ordination is empowerment. Is empowerment. That he may empower them. Empower them to do what? To be able to heal, to cast out devils. Is it written like that? That he may have power to heal the sick and cast out devils. Hallelujah. So you can see today that the final stage is that is you must have power. Isn't it? To heal and to cast out devils. And one of the things I wanted to ask here in this class is that after this trading, each of you should be able to cast out devils. Are you together here? Casting devils is not a job of Jesus. A work of what? Of the disciples. Hallelujah. Praise God. I should not see a demon around here and you're asking Bishop to deal with it. It is you to deal with it. Because around here sometimes there is for the fire of God comes here there is manifestation of demons. Isn't it? And I see some people running away or wondering what to do. Or where is Bishop? Why should he not come and deal with this demon? Isn't it? You are here to be empowered to deal with to cast out demons, to heal the sick and to cast out demons. You are not here just to be laid hands on. Isn't it? Isn't it? Hallelujah. A disciple is trained to exercise the same power his leader is exercising. Isn't it? That's a disciple. You, you take what we call delegated authority to exercise. Isn't it? The same authority which the leader is exercising by the grace of God. Today we have got many Christians who are sitting in the church and they have never cast one devil. They have never. You have got authority. 
in the name of Jesus hautakaa kwa nyumba yangu toka uende si ndio are we talking about are we seeing are we here talking hallelujah many christians have been made so weak because wa mkoa wa kristo wa kuombewa si ni kweli wa kristo wafanya nini wa kuombewa na kupewa maunabii hallelujah lakini si wa kristo wa kufanya nini wa kufanya kazi bwana yesu asifiwe and that is why you are in the disciples class now so that you can be able to learn how to do what exercise deliverance ministry praying casting out devils healing the sick hallelujah if all of us started exercising that the work of the lord will flow kazi ya bwana itakuwa kubwa hallelujah today we naenda kwa wachungaji nakuta queue at queue kubwa watu wanangojea wote watolewe mapepo na mchungaji mmoja hallelujah we are in having a church where 99% of the christians are not working only the pastor is working bwana yesu asifiwe na iwezekani hiyo mnanisikia eh wahu mimi siwezi kuja kule shule huko mapepo ya huko wewe ndio utadeal nayo kwa hivyo lazima ukae hapo usome kwa sababu mapepo iko shule si shule hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe amen so that is the purpose of you being here in this class number one, to be with the leader number two, to be available to be equipped to be prepared to do the work isn't it number three, to be empowered isn't it to do the work and you need to be empowered bwana yesu asifiwe hallelujah amen so we have been dealing with spiritual warfare we have been dealing with spiritual warfare and we have been dealing with the ministry of deliverance ukombozi okay christ jesus when he was here he dealt with demons is it are we followers of jesus what did jesus say in in john 14:12 John 14:12 What did Jesus say? What did he say? Can you read that? John 14:12 What did he say? Hallelujah. What did he say? Mtoto tusome haraka haraka tukona. It's very little time. 14:12 Even you need to know it by as as memory verse. He says you are stand and read loudly Uh, Millicent. That 14th of because I go to my father. Mm. He that what believes in me. So deliverance ministry is a ministry of faith. Eh? Wakati unanganga una 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 uh, pambana na pepo unapambana na pepo kwa imani. Tuko pamoja. Unapambana na pepo kwa imani. Okay? What is the faith? The faith is okay, the faith is that Jesus said he that believes in me okay the things i do he will do them even greater things than this isn't it and to me i can only say you are a follower of Jesus if you are doing the things Jesus did tuko pamoja hapa waje utwache hii ukristo wa siku hizi wa kisasa okay ukristo hata hujulikani Ukristo ina gani? Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Mambo Yesu alifanya. Isn't it? Lazima tuifanye. Na kama tufanye mambo Yesu alifanya, we are not followers of Jesus. Tuko pamoja. Yesu aliponya wagonjwa. Na wewe unasaili kufanya nini? Fanya hivyo. Hallelujah. 
Yesu alitoa pepo. Nawe na sasa kufanya nini? Kwa sababu nani? Kwa imani. Hallelujah. We don't we don't we don't cast devils. Hallelujah. Because we are strong. We cast the devil because it is written. It is written. Hallelujah. In my name you shall do what? What why is it written that? Why is it written that in my name you shall cast out devils? Which is scripture is it written? Aya. Wey ya 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 watu wanasoma Biblia hapa kweli. Biblia mnasoma. Hiyo iko wapi? Aya ya 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 ya. Iko wapi hiyo? Hiyo si ya kugugu hiyo ni ya kujua tu in my name. Eh is it not is it not eh is it not in mark the great commission is it not mark 16 is it is is it is and these signs will follow yeah 16 hiyo ni yangu hiyo hiyo hata usaili kugugu hiyo najua mimi nilijua hiyo zamani hallelujah yeah bwana yesu asifiwe unajua the devil only understand the word that's why jesus said it is written you don't cast devils with your this is what we are looking today the way to cast out devils okay you cast the devils by the word of god okay by the word of god it is written in mark 16:17 These signs will follow they that believe. What is it written there? Is it saying these signs will follow pastors? Is it written that these signs will follow prophets? Is it written that these signs will follow bishops? What is written there? Eh. Those who believe in my name they will cast out what? and they will speak in what in tongues tongues isn't it hallelujah so is it a bishop who has said that is it eternity is it a prophet who said it is jesus himself isn't it are you a believer are you a believer so who should be casting out devils is it bishops or prophets who should be casting out devils hmm is a believers isn't it this is a believers job hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe so whose job is it is it your job it is you isn't it hallelujah you need to cast out devils from your children some of the mothers hallelujah a lot of time as children grow up watoto wakaendelea kukua sa ingine wanapata mapepo even when they are small lazima utoe mapepo bwana yesu asifiwe wengine wanashika mapepo huko shule bwana yesu asifiwe ukija nyumbani mama ako hapo anatoa pepo naweza kuona vile mtoto ana bibi unajua kuna pepo hapa bwana yesu asifiwe hallelujah those who believe in my name they shall cast out devils so we want to understand how to cast out devils how to cast out devils Hallelujah. You want to know how to cast out devils or you want to leave that to me? <laughs> Hallelujah. So the first thing how to cast out devils number one, is to know the signs of a demon. Tulisoma hapa tumapili. Is it signs of what? Demonic oppression. Okay? Could there are signs of demonic oppression? Okay? And a lot of time you can identify demonic oppression. Okay? You unaweza kuangalia patterns. Okay? Unaweza kuangalia how somebody is behaving and you see this is not normal. This is a demon spirit. Okay? Hallelujah. The people who have when the demon spirits come in somebody it affects their behavior. 
Okay, it affects what? Their behavior. Their behavior changes. Somebody who was very calm, he becomes violent. Did you see that in the Bible? Did you see that man who was, the Bible says, he was staying in the tombs? Isn't it? And nobody could do what? Could bind him. Because every time they bound him, he cut the chains. Isn't it? So if people, and when the demons left, what did happen to him? Was he not a very humble guy? A very humble. He said, Jesus, may I follow you? Very nice guy. Very, he's a gentleman. A lot of people, when demons come in their lives, they become what? Abnormal. Their behavior changes. Hallelujah. As somebody who was, who was, who was very uh, calm, he become noisy. He become argumentative. He becomes, he want to fight. Hallelujah. Recognize this is what? A demon. So if you observe people's behavior, you can actually observe whether there is a demon at work. Hallelujah. It affects behavior. Okay. Two. Okay. It affects. Okay. It affects their spiritual lives. Okay. It affects their spiritual lives. Sometimes even what they talk about. What they talk about. Some people they can talk and you hear that person is not the one talking, is a demon. Is it true? Hallelujah. And a villa me kujibu. See ni pepo y me fana nini. I me ongea yo. Hallelujah. Sometimes the demons take over the lives of people. So it is also known by speech. Demons pervert speech. Okay? They pervert speech. And a lot of time listening carefully, you can actually hear that is not the person speaking. It's a demon what? Speaking. Hallelujah. So if I've had behavior, they have had what? Speech. Hallelujah. Next thing which happens with these demons, they can also, the Bible says, this man became, he, he could not wear clothes. Okay? Hallelujah. A lot of time when demons come in people's life, even their way of dressing changes. Sinikweli. Naona vile mtu wa mavaa nyuele. Sidiyo? Anakuambia yiko hivi. Hallelujah. Meanza kutavuta vile zingine. Sinaidwa nini tattoo. Kuna mtu wa kona tattoo hapa. Janiku warn. Let me warn you. Tattoos are not biblical. Okay? As if you were, is, the Bible is against cutting our bodies and putting tattoos. And tattoos is a manifestation of our spirits. Hallelujah. As if you were, I don't know how tattoo is Jesus. Some people say I'm going to put tattoo is Jesus. I don't know how to put Jesus. It is too wrong. Amen. And so there is what we call manifestation of some things. Hallelujah. You are many people with the demons. They will manifest in the way they are going to dress. Because there is something which is speaking to them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Demons can also be manifested during the time of worship. Especially when there is the presence of God comes down, you can be able to notice demon spirits. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And so the first thing is to identify the demons. Okay? And sometimes demons can hide themselves. They can hate themselves. You remember the demon which was upon that young girl who was following Apostle Paul? Isn't it? She had a demon. But she kept saying, these are the servants of the Most High God. But it was not the, the Holy Spirit who was speaking. It was a demon which was disguising itself. Why was, he, why was that girl speaking like that? Why was the demon disguising itself? Why would a demon speak the words of God. Hey, Christy, tell us. Why would this demon, he, he, 
ilikuwa imejificha eh kwa nini why was it saying these are the servants of the it was promoting them but it was a demon spirit it did not want to be cast away okay the a lot of time demons are strategic isn't it they are strategic they can come in a church like this and a counterfeit to be very spiritual isn't it because they are targeting to be accepted and after being accepted they are going to blow the church in a particular time is it true so they can be here somebody may be looking like spiritual but is what it's a demon spirit hallelujah is a demon spirit hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe amen demon spirit don't take correction a lot of time when you confront the demon spirit they react hallelujah bwana yesu asifiwe so the first thing is to identify the demon the second thing hallelujah is to pray to seek the lord how to deal with that demon okay the scripture itself biblia this bible is full of demons which were cast out okay so you can start reading to prepare yourself how to deal with that demon now the first thing is never deal with the demons when you are not right with god never deal with the demons when you are not right with god you remember the seven sons of skevas who dealt going to cast the demon isn't it they went to do what to cast the demon wakasema pepo toka katika jina ile ile ambiliwa na nani na paul si ndio hiyo pepo ikawaambia ikawaambia aje paul we know and jesus we also know okay but who are you so it is very important as you deal with the devil to know who you are first because demons also know who you are okay there's one time i remember some young people were casting out the devil and the demons were laughing they were mocking them because they also need to know ajua mtaweza kweli need to know ajua mambo yenu tunaweza kusema Hallelujah. Hata kusema wewe na wewe na wewe iko hivi. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. So as you go to deal with the demons first you need to prepare yourself. Okay? You need to prepare yourself. Number two, you need to know yourself. Lazima ujujue. Hallelujah. Bwana asifiwe. Lazima ujujue kwamba wewe umeokoka kwanza. Hallelujah. Lazima ujujue kwamba umetembea na Mungu kwa ukamilifu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Hallelujah. Number three, lazima ujujue kwamba uko na authority because the demons the demons the language the demons understand is authority. Demons are spiritual beings. And the only thing they understand is what? Authority. Hallelujah. What is authority? What is authority? Hey, what is authority? My friend Esther, tuambie mama Esther, tuambie leo what is the authority? Power, eh? You, you have complicated it more. You have complicated it even more because now we are going to ask you what is power now? This is it. So what is this authority? Eh? What is authority in simple terms? What is authority? What it is what? Eh. 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 Is that authority? I'm hearing there's a course in this Bible school. And that's why I tell you to go join the Bible school, eh? There's a whole course called what? Is it? What is it called, eh, Waidaka? That course you did it. The believers what? authority is it is a course we do a whole course on authority so what is authority instruction 
So you are saying, you give instruction now, that is authority. What is authority? Yes? Huh? Having faith. The spiritual content. What about the government? The government has authority also. In the spiritual content. Having faith. Huh? What? Uh huh. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yes. As one that tell us, what is this thing called? Although I know you, you use it every time. But what is it? Eh? Kenya Revenue Authority. Is it an authority? Eh? Why is it an authority? Okay. What is authority? First of all, yes. Uh -huh. Ability to command. You're almost getting it, but you have not gotten it. What is authority? Is it? Huh? Given permission to do something. Amen. Uh -huh. You almost. Uh, what who is getting, going to get it? Now, Emily, to try. What is authority? Being what? Uh -huh. uh huh. To do what? Power to do what? <laughs> you are missing just something very important, but authority, yeah? authority is ability to enforce obedience. Okay? Authority is ability to enforce what? Obedience. Isn't it? That's why Kenya Revenue Authority as it is an authority, it's not a service. Isn't it? It has been given ability to enforce what? Obedience to pay what? Tax. It's not just a service that I may decide to pay tax or not. They have been mandated. They have been mandated to, to what, what? To enforce obedience. Okay? That is what authority is. Okay? And that is why when we talk about authority, we talk about government. Government is an authority, isn't it? It can be able to enforce what? Obedience, isn't it? And in Kenya here, it has appointed different institutions. Okay? Some of them used to be just organizations, but now today they are authority. Kenya Revenue Authority. Okay? There are other authorities also. Currently now they have got another authority called Water Resource Authority. It's not a service. Is a what? An authority. When you read the act which Winnie will be giving you, the act of that organization, it has been given what we call prosecution powers. Any organization which is an authority, it has been given what? Prosecution powers. That it can actually arrest you. Are there policemen in, in Kenya? In Kenya KRA? They are policemen that can arrest you and they put you in jail. Isn't it? For defiling, isn't it? That is what an authority is. And that's why you can play with an organization, but not play with what? An authority. If it is just called a service, it's okay. But if it is called an authority, then you need to... Huh? God is an authority also. God is what? an authority, isn't it? Because God is able to enforce what? Obedience. You don't obey, you cause the drought, you cry to him, isn't it? He can even close your womb, isn't it? He can enforce what? He has an enforcement power, he can enforce. Hallelujah. What about, what about parents? 
our parents having authority. Isn't it? They have authority. Is that an authority? Parental, par- parenthood is not just an, another, it is an authority. And that's why an authority has got power to curse. Isn't it? Hallelujah. An authority. Amen. What is another authority? The word of God is what? The word of God is authority. This one is an authority. It's not a wish. So this is not a wish list. This is an authority, isn't it? You don't obey it, you suffer the consequences. Because it's what? An authority. Hallelujah. Amen. A man of God, a woman of God, who has been ordained by God, is he an authority? Does he carry authority? And that's why many Christians, when they deal with pastors and uh, people in the office, they just think they are just honorary people. But they don't realize they have got what? They have authority. They have been given authority. Hallelujah. That's why when we talk about Gen Z's, they are without understanding. Because they don't understand they are dealing with a man who has been given what? And a sword. Genesis Muko. You know, I was told Genesis are the same ones who used to burn the schools before. One as if you were. They grew without understanding there is what? And if you remember, that is the time when the Kiboko Ilikua withdrawn from, from school. The generation which came after Kiboko was withdrawn from school. Which did not experience what? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Long time ago, the principals had the power to beat the students and also to beat teachers also. There's one principal I knew used to beat students and also, also beat teachers. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. There's authority, okay? okay country, a country cannot be run where everybody can do everything. It's not possible. It's not possible that uh, you can just stand in the phrase and just uh, abuse your leader. It's not, it's not all right. Oh, is it, is it all right? Do you think it's all right? Should we continue like that? Should we just be in a situation where somebody should just stand and, uh, and just... Uh, abuse the leader just like that. Is, should it be a, could it be a country? Amen. There must be limit and what? Borderies. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know I'm Kono Ivi. Wahoo and the team uh, Millicent. When you have got your baby Aksimame hapa aseme wewe ni mjinga sana. Utamwambia asante sana. Utamwambia asante sana. Ama utadeal na yeye hapo kwa hapo. Sidio. <laughs> Sidio. I know very I'm very sure you are going to exercise what? Authority also. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And so demons also, demons, they only understand the language of what? Authority. So what is authority then? It means what is casting out devil is what? What is casting out a devil or a demon? It is now exercising your authority to enforce obedience on the demon spirit. Can I say that again? What is casting out the devil is exercising what? Your authority to enforce what? O- obedience <laughs> of the demon to get out. That is what is called, that is what we call, we don't preach to the demons. We exercise what? Authority to enforce them. That's why Jesus, when they came to Jesus, when they, when they came, when Jesus came to the tomb, what happened to the demon? The demon was very violent. But when Jesus arrived there, what happened to the demon? 
to go up to mko kwa basomo we are not preaching we are teaching what happened to the demon this man did he fight what happened when jesus came there eh what happened did he not recognize that the man of authority has come isn't it he even says jesus thou son hallelujah so demon recognize jesus they recognize the authority hallelujah amen and number two, they recognize he has authority to torment them because there are two things in casting out demons number one it is to enforce obedience on them to live number two if they don't leave you have also authority to torment them hallelujah amen can i speak that again so a demon in a person you have authority over it hallelujah jesus said a uh, one man said i'm a man and authority i tell my servants come and i tell another one go and he go it and i tell another one do and he does that is what authority is authority is the ability to say go and you go hallelujah amen in the place of work sarah in her place of work when this commissioner says from today go what happens i don't want to see you in this company again he writes a letter a man with a power of paper and pen what happens will you come there tomorrow will you have a sarali isn't it that is what authority is and therefore you and then if the commissioner just watches and say ah she is here i don't know what to do with her i don't know but the commissioner has got what authority isn't it hallelujah and then he's saying i don't know what to do and that is what a lot of us christians do the devil keeps hanging around and we say we don't know what to do yet we have got what you have authority isn't it whatever is happening there you are the one who have allowed it because you have authority even if you go in a matatu and anything is happening there you have authority but as was if you have authority to command situations and circumstances and how does how do you get this authority to enforce see to enforce the ability to tell them go and they go and they come and they come and they do hey tell the demon sit down eh? one time i found some people eh? they were dealing with a demon very violent demon ilikuwa inaangusha wanaume tano inaangusha hey wanamshika msichana mdogo inaangusha wana wakaanza kujaribu sasa kuchukua eh? ropes kum, kumfunga Hallelujah. I say to them leave that person alone. Okay? Leave leave them. Okay? And that I did I just commanded that demon violent spirit I said thou violent spirit I command you to be still. Isn't it? And the demon was still no more violent. So you can use ropes you can use what but you can also command it to be what to stop being violent isn't it what else was if you will so the, to deal with the demons you have to carry authority carry carry authority it's like the police how the police stop the vehicle is it the size of the police is it any drama is what authority okay like this and the vehicle does what stops why because the police has authority and demons only understand what we call authority ability you have ability to enforce obedience you have ability you have that ability to enforce that demon to live and to do everything you have even ability to tell you 
story. You have even ability to tell that demon to tell you where it came from. You have even ability to tell that demon to tell you in the name of Jesus the name of that demon. Isn't it? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Are we together here? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Glory to God. So, the, that authority to exercise it you must get it. How do you get authority? How do you get authority? You get authority by submitting to authority. Isn't it? The Bible says, hallelujah. God receives the proud but gives what? Grace to the humble. Resist. It says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. So it says, submit yourself. What did this man say? This man Jesus was talking to. Did he say, I am a man with authority? What did he say? And uh, then he says, and I say to one servant, go. And he goes. And I say another one, come. But did he say, I have authority? He said, what? I am a man, what? Under authority. Hallelujah. So when you are under authority, you receive what? Authority to enforce obedience. Hallelujah. When you are under the authority, for example, when, when you are in the office and you are under the authority of your managing uh, director, he gives you authority also to go and do what? Enforce obedience. Hallelujah. Wanaeswa asifiwe. Sinikweli. I'm a man under authority. So I have received authority. And the more we continue being under authority, the more we receive what? Authority. So the first thing when you are dealing with the demons, you must be able to understand that demons, the only language they understand is, is authority. Okay? That's why the Bible says, you shall command, you shall cast out devils. What does the word cast mean? What? Casting is an authority. Casting is, is not please. Casting is where you are telling them, in the authority given to me, I am casting you out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. It is where you, and the reason why Christians are not able to cast demons today is because Christians are not walking in authority. Hallelujah. So the first thing is to understand the language that the demons understand. They don't understand the police. They don't understand excuse me. They understand only order. Order. So you give the demons what? Order. That's why Jesus said, I command you, get out of this man. Isn't it? He ordered them. Hallelujah. Amen. And they left. Praise the name of Jesus. So the first thing is to understand the word of God concerning, concerning casting out devils. Hallelujah. So you have to be, understand it is authority, exercised in faith. Sorry. What is casting out demons? It is authority exercised in what? In faith. That is what casting out devils mean. It is authority exercised in faith. Hallelujah. It's authority exercised in faith. Hallelujah. You have faith in the word of God. What does the faith say? You shall cast out the devils. What does the faith say? You have authority. What does, the, what the, what does the, the, the word of God say? That Jesus defeated the devil 2,000 years ago and he has given us power. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Over demons, over scorpions and serpents. Hallelujah. And that is what casting out means. You are exercising the authority. Hallelujah. You are exercising the authority in faith. Hallelujah. You have to have faith. What is faith? Faith is 
believing that God is going to back you. That heaven is going to do what? To back what you're going to say. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Jesus said, whatever has got faith, like a mustard seed, he shall say to the mountain, not to pray, say, hallelujah. Say to the mountain, say to the demons, come out. And it leaves because of what? Because of the faith you have in the authority you carry. First of all, you have got faith in yourself. Then you have got faith in God. Hallelujah. One else has if you are we together here? So the, it is important to understand the language of casting out devils and demons. Hallelujah. Demons have got ranks. They are ranks. So they are they have ranks. They've got they are what we call juniors and they are seniors. And their bosses are there. Okay? In demon possession, we have got what we call the gatekeepers. The gatekeepers. Hallelujah. What, the gatekeeper is the demon which entered in that person. The, gate, the demon which entered that person first, we call it what? The gatekeeper. Because what happens is many people open the door for the first demon. Hallelujah. So as we deal with the demon deliverance, we have to understand and design what is a gatekeeper. Because the gatekeeper is one which holds the others inside. Hallelujah. One else has a few. He has the authority to hold others. And the others who are inside, that person will tell you, I cannot get out because, because I'm here legally, because there's a gatekeeper who is keeping me. Hallelujah. Are we, is it becoming more complicated? Na eleven gatekeepers? Huh? Gatekeepers are like the watch, they are the people who open the gate. Hallelujah, wanafungulia. Wanafungulia. Kuna watu wengine kwanza waliingiwa na uchungu. Bitterness and their lives. And that bitterness is a gatekeeper. Is the one which now opens people's immorality. Kafungua, kaingia. Isn't it? It opened the other demons a self destruction. Okay? Self destruction. Many people only deal with the symptom or what we call smaller demons. Isn't it? But there are bigger demons inside. Hallelujah. One else has a few. Amen. Somebody could be having a demon of suicide. But it is not the suicide which is the problem. Isn't it? It could be the gatekeeper, and a lot of time I've dealt with the demons of suicide. The gatekeeper spirits are rejection. Rejection. Hallelujah. Royal rejection iliingia kiwa mdogo. Royal nini? Rejection. Hallelujah. Rejection. A lot of time the rejection spirit. We call them spirit. Then the ile na mutawala. Ile the kingly spirit, the gatekeeper. Ile iliingia kwanza. Hallelujah. They are small. Okay. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. One time I was dealing with a, with, a, with a young man who was having demon spirit. Hallelujah. And this demon spirit entered in his life when he was secondary school. Secondary school. Okay. Hallelujah. Roya, there was a spirit of rejection. How did it enter in his life? It, was, it came through mockery. The boys in the school started in what? Mocking him. Alikuwa munono. He was a big boy. So vijana wakanda kumuita mama. Mother. Nani kijana? Hey, hey. Hey. Hallelujah. One day, he told me, one day, he was in the school, 
and the boys, eh, they ran after him, calling him Made, and he was so ashamed. Akaingia kwa cho. And they gathered outside there for over 30 minutes. Made toka, hey. Imagine, I'm just telling you. Okay, at that time, okay, the spirit of rejection came in his life. He felt rejected, isn't it? And when he felt rejected, a door opened in his life of demon spirit of rejection entered in his life. Hallelujah. Many people today have this spirit of rejection. Because the system of the world is a system of what? It's a system of rejection. Hallelujah. It's a system of rejection. Our examination system is a system of what? Rejection. Hallelujah. Because you cannot do mathematics properly, Hallelujah. you are rejected. Hallelujah. I remember one day, there's a, lay, a young girl, this sister came to my office. You know, she came to the office for prayer. And you know, eh, you know, the spirit she was carrying was so heavy. Heavy spirit of rejection. Because you know, I'm not very, very, I, I would not in normal situation send anybody away. But you know, I just felt like I just tell her, just go out, go away. You know, there was such a, and then the Holy Spirit told me, do not allow her to go. Okay? Because what is inside there is what is speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. I said I had to sit down and started to speak her story of her journey. Okay? From the time she was a child, her own mother tried to abort her. What is abortion? Is abortion rejection? Is there is rejection? Hallelujah. So she survived an abortion. So she survived what? Rejection. So right from the womb, right from the womb, it ended in her life. And there are many children like that who are, isn't it? They are either were aborted, tried to be aborted, or Mm. They were married with their mother. They were married with your <laughs> Tell what happened where they went. Where they went. Were they accepted? Isn't it? So imagine a child as young. Okay? But what happens? Okay? Nowadays I have started telling many ladies, if you have a child. Where are you going to go? 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 Where are you rejected. Is it really? So it's even better to go to the house. Because you are going to go to the house. Where are you going to go? You know, we have to talk. We have to really deal with these issues. Because many children today are not okay. It's because they have gone through what? Rejection, isn't it? Hallelujah. A lot of rejection in their lives. So this young, this uh, young lady said, you know, that's what happened at my birth. From there, my mother got married somewhere with me. And there, I was also rejected. I had to go back to my grandmother. At a young age now, because I could not find love. Isn't it? I could not find love from my parents. Okay? So one day a young man came, the name of love. Isn't it? Rejection attracts early marriage. <laughs> Am I talking to us? When you see a girl getting married very early, sometimes it's because of what? Rejection. Hallelujah. No, no, that means you need to learn. Learn, ni ene ni kiendanga. Hallelujah, Amen. 
So this boy gave her a pregnancy, isn't it? And the boy also, when she was expecting, akamukata, akamutupa inje. Can you imagine? So my people do, namuvuata. You know, demons attract, particular demons attract the same demons. Rejection attracts rejection. And she told me, you know, then another, then I decided to get a job kwa muindu kwa industry area. Tulipata kama wasichana watano, tuka anjiriwa. After one week, hmm, after one week, the muindi called me in the office. He slapped me and threw me out. And here she is in the church. And then, so it's a spirit, the spirit of rejection has pursued her all through. And they need to be cast out. These are demon spirit. Our system of Kenya is founded, Africa, is founded on rejection. One boy from Karen here told me, him and his sister, they did exam. And the sister was very bright. So the, he took the results of the father, who was uh, very wealthy. He was playing golf. So he went to the golf course. And when they went to take the results there, the father only talked to the sister, who had gotten an A. Okay. And him, the father, never talked with him, never even greeted him. Hallelujah. Are we together here? Amen. It's a system of what? Rejection. Hallelujah. And the spirit of rejection, because I told you demons enter people in the point of what? Weakness. The point of what? Weakness. So at that point of weakness, when you have faced this, the door what? Opens. Isn't it? A door opens and a demon spirit does what? Enter you. Okay? We even have times when our, some of our children used to be called some bad names when they were growing up. Was it happening in our home? Nickname. You are just nicknamed somebody. And the children will laugh. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So these are called gatekeepers. They enter in your life. And that gatekeeper ensures it opens other doors for other demons. Hallelujah. And they start, they start, they make a house inside you. Hallelujah. You know there must be a host. What is a host? Who is a host? A gatekeeper is a host. Who is a host? Kama rukienda kule kisumo, alau pasalidi atupoke, na atuweke kwa nyumba yake, Eh? Oh. Yeah, who was you? <laughs> yeah. If you go to America and then somebody receives you and he keeps you in his house, that one we call what? A host. So even demons host demons. So because they have entered in you, then they start hosting what? Others land here in Guinea Barua, Mukuje, Tawapatia visa. Thank you. Host. Hallelujah. So they build a house in you, okay? Demon spirit, they build a house in you. Because one entered and others have continued to enter. One has to ask if you were. Ilianza na cigara, ikakaribija mira. Mira ikakaribija, ikakaribija dini ingine, mbanki. Mbanki ikakaribija ndawa ile ingine. Ile ingine ikakaribija. Ile ingine ikakaribija na, they are very happy. Because they have found a place to do what? To live, isn't it? One has to ask if you were. So as we deal with deliverance, we must be able sometimes to design which one came first. Because a lot of time, you cannot deal with the others, you are all dealing with the one which came first, the host. Hallelujah. Because the others are just hosted there by the one which came first. And that is what demons, dealing with the demon spirit, you have to understand. Hallelujah. The other thing you have to understand is a legal hold. Legal hold. You have to understand the legal hold. Okay? This is very important. Okay? As you deal with demons, you must know that demons have rights. Okay? 
they have their own rights. Okay, one has it And they have a right. What made them to enter this person? Okay, for example, if this person, the demon, the first demon entered there because of, of what we call rejection. So what do what we have to deal with? First of all, we have to deal with what? She must be able to release and to be able to accept themselves. Okay? And accept that I'm not rejected. Hallelujah. Because you see, demons take opportunity of our weakness in you. Isn't it? Hallelujah. So what is a legal hold? For example, if somebody, if somebody, hallelujah, killed somebody, okay, or somebody took somebody's money, and that demon is there because of that money, okay, or if somebody, the demon entered because of bitterness and forgiveness, yeah, and mutu alikukosea, na kakwa na uchungu, and that demon got access in your life. Isn't it? So what do you have to deal with first? Forgiveness. You must forgive that person first. Because it doesn't matter how many prayers we pray here for deliverance. That demon will not leave because it has got what? Legal hold. It has a right to be there. Okay? It has a right to be there. And that's why when we deal with demon cases, we have to deal with, first of all, dedicating. If that demon is there because you went through a particular dedication, or you went through a covenant, okay? That demon will continue to be there because it is kept there by that covenant, isn't it? That covenant, and so for you to exercise deliverance, we must first of all deal with the covenant which hushed this demon in, his, in the life of this person. One answer was if he Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody with a question? So, you have to understand the legal hold. And a lot of time, that's why we deal with something called inner healing. Inner healing, if you read well in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, it is deals first of all with salvation. Then the second thing with what? Healing. Inner healing. Isn't it? Then number three, deliverance. Okay? Because a lot of deliverance cases are tied to inner healing. A lot of people, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus. A lot of people, a lot of demon spirit, okay? I remember one time I was dealing with one person, and this person, there was a demon of self-destruction in their life. Hallelujah. And as we were dealing with her, we had to understand what happened to her life. And her life, what happened is when she was a young child, a young girl, yeah, she was raped. Okay? She was raped. Hallelujah. And the spirit and of destruction. What do you think about rape? Is it pleasure or destruction? Do these people who rape people want to get pleasure or they want to destroy? So what do they release? The spirit of what? Destruction. Hallelujah. They release the spirit of destruction. So when that happens, they open a door of destruction in our life. A demon of destruction enters in our life. And that is why this girl now, later in life, has gone into alcoholism. Isn't it? She has gone into drugs. The drugs is not the problem. But what is the doorkeeper? What is the doorkeeper there? Destruction. Kuna roya destruction. Nifanya nini? Iliingia kwanza. Nandiyo ina invite what? Mbangi kuja. Sigara, kuja. Isn't it? Hallelujah. It is inviting these others so that they can accomplish what? The mission. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So we have to deal with that first. Isn't it? Deal with that instant, that situation, that rape. Hallelujah. To bring forgiveness. 
to bring healing. And from there now, the demons have no right to be there. You see, the demons, when we deal with whatever holds them, then they have no power to be there. Hallelujah. Anybody with a concern? So they call a legal what? Legal hold or legal claim. Okay, so you have learned a few things today. You have learned about the doorkeeper. You have learned the legal hold. You have learned the hosts. Amen. You have learned what? Authority. Do you see now the reason for coming to class? Amen. You learn. You are able to understand. So when you see people around with the demons, don't just, just, don't, don't just think that whatever you are seeing could be the issue. It could be other deeper issues. And we need to deal with them. And then after we understand, after we have dealt with what we call the material surrounding this, hallelujah, then we are able to face the demon and say, demon, you have no right now. Okay? So we, a lot of time as we deal with the demons, we have to have these people dedicating themselves to God again. Dedicating themselves again. Because sometimes when people are dedicated to God, the Bible says you dedicate your body, your flesh, your soul, your spirit. Isn't it? So when we dedicate your soul, your spirit to God, then the demon is, has no place legally to be there. Because the body is dedicated, the soul, the spirit, the mind is dedicated. Hallelujah to God. Amen. So anybody with a comment or a question? Yes, my time is up. Is one of them. Not the, not entirely. Yeah, but the, but offense is one of them. Rejection is another one. Okay. Yeah. So you have offense. You see, demons are like uchafu. Eh? When you have when you want bacteria here, do you invite them? Do you send them a letter to come. What do you need to do to bring the bacteria here? You create what? A dirty environment, isn't it? Isn't it? And that's why many people today, Christians, are having demons. Because of what? They have created a dirty environment. And demons have what? They come inside. Hallelujah. Because they can, they can sense you have already created what? A dirty environment. Hallelujah. Amen. So, there's a lot. There are a lot of things which open these doors. Offense opens the door, okay? Rape opens the door, what you call abuse. And I'm going to tell you so many things about abuse. Okay? Abuse is one of the leading cause of demon possession. Okay? And abuse can be in any way. Okay? One day I was dealing with one of the young people and he had a spirit, demon spirit. And what was how did that demon spirit enter? Is because of being left alone by their parents. Okay? You see, you, you see, a child, this child was taken to boarding school when he was very small, four years old. I don't recommend you taking your children to boarding school at four years, please. Okay? Because of what I've dealt with, that when children are there, out there, isn't it? They feel what? Abandoned. And when you feel abandoned, you open a door, isn't it? A door opens because now you feel abandoned. Abandonment is an abuse. Mm. Because a child should be the parents, isn't it? When I as a female, in the future, even become a president, I will, I will abolish all boarding schools. Myself. I will abolish them. Okay, because I don't believe in boarding schools. I believe children should be their parents. Sorry. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Children go through a lot of things in boarding schools. I'm a product of boarding school and I know. Children go through a lot of abuse in boarding schools. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of them even they live never to tell their parents what they went through. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And so it is important to know there is a different kind of abuse which people go through. There is an abuse. There is a physical abuse. There is also a verbal abuse. Isn't it? And a lot of these verbal abuse, like imagine you are growing in a home where every day I have dealt with the children who have been demon possessed just because their fathers were very abusive. Okay? Shouting. Shouting leaves you vulnerable, isn't it? When somebody shouts you, you become very weak. And at that point, it's very easy for a demon spirit to enter you. Hallelujah. Please. Amen. It's very important. Hallelujah. Spirit of fear enters immediately. Because you know this child is being subjected. I remember one of the young girls came to me for deliverance ministry. And this girl had been abused by his parents. What happened to this child? She told me, you know, one day, Bishop, yeah, my father came, who we were playing with my sister. He started beating me. He beat me until they had to pour water on me. You know water? Why do you pour water on somebody? Because he's dying, isn't it? Hallelujah. He started dying. So they had to put water on her, the child, the girl, so that he can come back alive. And she told me, you know, my mother was watching. And from that day, my, the DNA of my heart changed. The DNA of my heart changed. And from that day, I recognized I've got no mother and I've no father. And that's how she ran away from home. And that's why she ended up in this city of Nairobi under self-destruction. Okay? So it's very important even when we are disciplining our children to know what is the limit, what is the level. Hallelujah. Amen. When you are, when, how many people here have children? My friend. Number one, do not beat your children with your hands. Because hands are supposed to do what? To love them, isn't it? To impress them. Yeah, if you want to beat your children, get a stick, isn't it? And then anoint it. Pray for it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just telling you things I've done myself. You see, I've walked the journey. Hallelujah. Amen. And then introduce the stick to the children. Tell them this stick, okay, is a very bad thing. This stick. The stick is the one which is bad. Hallelujah. Amen. So when the child does wrong, just bring the stick. Tell you, you remember the stick? And you don't beat, you don't discipline your children when you are annoyed. Because you transfer the spirit of hunger to them. You do it when you are sober. When you are what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we here? Are we together? Are you able to do that? You know? When I put a na head, kill a kid. It's not good. Hallelujah. We are allowing spirit of violence on our children. And they grow with what? Violence. Because the spirit of violence was introduced in their lives. Amen. So anybody else with a comment, question? Yes? My time is up. Oh, it went a long time ago. Huh? Yes. Yes. It's of course because they feel abandoned. (laughs) 
<laughs> Amen. Let me tell you, from my study, I found out many demon spirits in people today entered them when they were children. Okay? Hallelujah. Most of the demon cases we are dealing with today, they entered in these children when they were between, when they are born, they are womb, and by the time they get 15 years. And after 15 years, you are dealing with a very hard situation because already my people in Mengia, they may have Jenga Nyumba. Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore, it is really important that as we grow these children, because some of even the people who stay with them, okay, whether they are maids or what, they are also able to influence them. Okay? And that is why it is important to look for a way to be with our children. Okay? It may not be full time, but we need to be able to really bring them near. Okay? Because if we don't bring them near, we shall not know what demons have entered their lives. Okay? Hallelujah. We need to be with them. We need to create time. Even if it is not being with them full time, but at least when we have time, we need to be able to, to, be able to interact with them and they pray with them. Because in that way, you are able to understand what is at work with them. Okay? And they should also be able to understand why you are away. Okay? Your children must understand why you are away. Otherwise, they, if they think that you are away because you are abandoning them, then the, 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 the devil speaks to them. So the devil speaks to the children. Okay? I don't have time to tell you this, but I can tell you that many children, the demons speak to them. If you can befriend your children, they will tell you the things which the devil is telling them. Okay? And some of them, they continue telling them and building them and then persuade them, tells them you are perfect, your parents, they don't love you. Okay? That's why they have left you. So you have to share with them and tell them the reason why I'm away is because of this. You have to walk with them. They must understand why you are away. And you must also understand, you must also understand what they think about yourself being away. Okay? That kind of thing must come. So that at least they are not exposed to a particular preaching of the devil that you have abandoned them. Okay? This is important. Shall we stand in prayer? Thank you so much. So you know how to cast a devil now. Hallelujah. Amen. Some demons don't go without prayer. The word fasting. Hallelujah. And when you are casting demons, please eh, speak to them. I've heard very many, sometimes I've uh, witnessed cases where people are casting out devils and the devils cannot come out. Because kama ni vijana, kama wako watano, eh, maingi ya koapo, na yule mwingine, eh, Steve wako hapo, sasa wako kumi ya wako watano hapa, na polini yako. Eh, toka toka. Eh, hui ya namuambia, Nyamasa, huyo mwingine anamwambia proka. Huyo mwingine anamwambia eh ka chini pepo. Huyo mwingine anamwambia simama. Sasa at the end of the day pepo anagoa nini? Confused. Ajui atasikiza nani? So when you are doing uh, doing deliverance ministry, you need to do it together. Agree. So that is one person who is doing what? Who is undressing the demon spirit. Not all of you. Some of you could be in the city, but not speak to the demon what? Directly. Because sometimes people think if we, we all compact it, it a talk raka. But when you compact all of you, the demon gets confused. Because say, Sarah meniambia ni kai jini. Uyo na uya meniambia ni nyamase. Sasa mimi, sasa unajua pepo tuina sikiza. It is obeying all of you, but then it is confused. Hallelujah. Praise the name of you. And dress it personally in agreement. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Just speak to God. Get to tell God, prepare me to know, to deal with demons in the name of Jesus. 
that you cannot fear demons, that you have got power and authority to cast out demons, to deal with demons, to heal the sick in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I pray that you may prepare us, that, Lord, we may not just be Christians who need to be prayed for, but we are Christians that can exercise authority of a demon spirit and cast them out in the name of Jesus, that you may have power of a demon spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. Wherever they are, Lord, oh God, that my Father Jehovah, we will not operate in fear, but we will operate in authority in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Welcome somebody in the celebration service.